sort of pleasure to uh, welcome you to AMWEX Ramadan series. Um, we take you to a very different kitchen. As you know that Muslims are not monolithic, we are very diverse and we come from different cultural backgrounds. Um, and today we want to share the, the, the cultural uh, richness of the Bangladeshi community in America. And for that, I have Jolie Emma. She's going to be talking about how Ramadan is celebrated in her household and how she, in her fantastic cooking, uh, uh, you know, Jolie's kitchen started cooking and COVID brings opportunities. And she's going to talk about how she uh, took on this mammoth task of, of creating Jolie's kitchen um, in, uh, during COVID. Um, not only that, she's going to show us um, how to make some fantastic Bangladeshi Ramadan uh, dishes. So over to you, jo Jolie. And I'm. Thank you, Anila. Uh, I really appreciate uh, having me, and I wanted to wish everyone happy Ramadan. This is my pleasure to be here. I really appreciate you guys uh, having me here. So uh, Ramadan is special for uh, every Muslim and uh, so is uh, in my house. I, um, I have, um, I, I know like in a month of Ramadan, we cook usually so many different dishes like uh, uh, sweet dishes, spicy dishes, uh, you know, all these curries and everything. So. Well, with a limited time, I can only do few. Uh, I can only introduce few items that you know I would like to do the uh, cook today, especially the one that is very uh, traditional uh, in in our culture. Uh, so I also thought that I will cook some fish because fish is a very very Bangladeshi dish, you know. But like fish curry, especially in Southeast Asia, I think you know Bangladeshi people is known for fish. So I thought I'll I'll try to make one fish curry as well if we have uh, plan, you know, if we have time. Um, but um, what I would like to say, like, you know, how I, uh, my background, I'll, I'll, I'll like to talk about a little bit of my background. So I'm originally from Bangladesh. I was born in Bangladesh. I did uh, some education there and then I moved to Sweden. And my middle school, high school, I finished in Sweden and then I moved to America. I studied here and married. I have two beautiful daughters. They're 17 and uh, 14. And uh, I was, I love cooking. Cooking was always my hobby, but I never uh, thought about YouTubing. But during a pandemic, uh, when kids were home, my husband was home and uh, I just realized that I was always in the kitchen. I was cooking and cooking and cooking. I mean, when, when we had a normal life, I'm, I mean, my household only there used to be have three meals. And then during Ramadan, I mean, during uh, COVID, I think we we're having six to seven meals a day. That was the same <laughs> in every household. Yeah. So I think that was the cases for every house. So then I said, I just covered, then I just thought, you know what, uh, since I'm always in the kitchen, why not just you know, share my recipes with my you know, friends and families. And then I, then I started YouTubing and then I'm on YouTube, I mean, Facebook page. So uh, like I said, I'm still pretty new, but I'm I'm just uh, I do it for fun and as as hobby uh, since I like cooking. So that's how I started my YouTubing. And today uh, I will uh, introduce some of the iftar item and then uh, one fish curry. So that's like for dinner. And then iftar usually we start with some you know fried uh, stuff as you know. So what I have here, I prepare myself a um, little bit uh, ahead of time. So that way wow, we don't have to. <laughs> yeah, so I have um, uh, chopped and cut and prepared most of the items. So that way uh, it's ready to cook. So uh, I'm gonna start with the first item that I'm gonna do is called uh, chola. This is in Bengali, we call it chola. So uh, this one is already boiled uh, and uh, so these are garbanzo beans. It is a garbanzo, but um, this is a black black one, you know. Okay. So the garbanzo one is usually white. I'm not so sure what is the difference. And also, garbanzo is much bigger than this one. Okay. And, so, and do, can you get them at any grocery store? Any grocery store. I 
yeah, pretty much all the Indian, yeah, for sure, uh, India and Bangladeshi grocery store. I have seen also some Middle Eastern grocery store as well. So yes, you can get it in any grocery store. And these are actually uh, very healthy, healthier than garbanzo, I believe, because the, the fiber, it has an amazing fiber and it tastes good. And Bangladeshi people usually use this, uh, this one. We call it chola. So I'm gonna make this chola with, uh, I'll mix with this, some potato. So the potato is cooked and I cut it in smaller pieces. So that way it's ready to go. And I am going to make one vegetable. Uh, we call it in Bengali pakora, or I think it's uh, Indian and Pakistani as well. Uh, so I'm gonna make one vegetable pakora. The reason I thought I should make one vegetable pakora because, you know, month of Ramadan, usually we do a lot of, uh, you know, a little bit unhealthy food, I would say, I like a lot of fried stuff, a lot of sweet dishes. And kids normally don't eat uh, so much vegetables. So that I thought this is a good way of feeding them vegetable at the same time. You know, it's, it's also tasty. So what I have here for that, I have a uh, lot of chopped spinach, fresh chopped. Mm -hmm. And then I have a cabbage. Uh, and then I have some um, uh, shredded potatoes. And I actually washed it and I made sure that the structures, all the starch is gone. So that way it's a little bit less hard. And I also have shredded uh, carrots. So these, uh, here I have some onion. So basically my vegetable um, pakora will be spinach, cabbage, carrots, potato, and onion. And of course I chopped uh, lots of um, green chilies. I love uh, spicy food. So I have all these chopped chilies. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think this is going to be great for um, my my American friends are always asking for vegetarian recipes. Yeah, perfect. Like, yeah, it's perfect for them. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, because we're making a, we're going to fry it and it has to hold it together. So in order for that, we need to use, uh, uh, you know, these are um, chick flowers. Uh, we call it beson. Uh, so we're going to use this and I always mix it with the rice flour. So the, what rice flour does, it makes it more crispy. So I'm going to combine all these together with the uh, basin and rice flour and then mix it. And then my um, oil is already, I already turned on the stove. So I'm going to start frying. While I start fly, frying that, I'm going to, on my next stove, I'm going to do the chola and then uh, my uh, other stuff. Also, uh, I personally love noodles, especially with the vegetable and egg and uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, with a little bit of curry powder. So uh, month of Ramadan, I always actually make some noodles too. So I did boil my noodles and chop the vegetables. So for, for my noodles, I have all the uh, vegetable chopped and ready. So I think I'm pretty much ready to start. And uh, so, First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn my camera toward my stove. All right. So this one, I'm gonna start with uh, my chola. And this one, I'm gonna start with all my fried stuff. So I'm also, um, sorry, I, I forgot to mention that I will also use the eggplant pakora. So my eggplants are already cut in thin slices and uh, I'm gonna um, make the egg Eggplant pakora. Then I have the cauliflower, which I'm planning to do at the end if I have enough time, but it's already uh, ready. So that we will wait uh, at the end of the, you know, timing. So we'll see how much time we have. So, oh, and another very, very important thing that I forgot. Uh, so this is uh, lentil, the uh, yellow lentil, masoor dal. So this one, I made it paste, and this is uh, one of the very, very traditional Bangladeshi uh, pakora, like we call it uh, uh, piaju in Bengali. Mm -hmm. So this one is a, it's a, it's a masoor dal, like a lentil, yellow lentil. I made it paste, and I'm gonna add uh, onion, chilies, uh, cilantro, salt, and then mix it, and then deep fried. So this is a very delicious one. and. For any vegetarian people, they would actually love all the dishes that I'm pre preparing today, except for fish. Everything is like for any vegetarian people, they're going to love it. So I think I'm going to love it. And my kids are going to love it because they like healthy food. And, yeah. you know, all the young people have got into cooking in the past one year, COVID. 
yes in getting in the kitchen with their parents or if they're even if they're alone um, my daughter's been doing that and she'll be so happy to see all the vegetables that you're using really That's yeah it. and for vegetable pakora I, i i think that spinach is a great uh, you know uh, it's like a fantastic uh, Uh, vegetable because that's so good for everybody and the cabbage is good carrots is good you can literally use any vegetable you like uh i thought i should yeah uh, i i tried to use a low carb vegetable basically so i thought you know instead of uh, using all kind of vegetable let's just stick to the low carb one so that's why i chose cabbage and spinach and you know carrots so so i'm going to so first thing we're going to do i'm going to use my hand so excuse me um i'm going to start with my piaggio so i have some onion here and for piaggio which is the lentil one we use a lot of onion because that is the key thing so you have to use a lot of onion and i like spicy so i'll do a lot of chilies as well chilies um some people use little uh, turmeric just to get the color um i do sometimes sometimes i don't so today i'm going to use some turmeric as well and uh, a little bit of chili powder and i have uh, salt here so the ingredients are pretty simple um and some cilantro so that is so basically i'm going to mix it with my hand i like to i like to touch my food with hand so a lot of people use it like in you know, a fork and spoon and all that but i i i i love touching it with the food with the hand i feel like you know i get the personal feeling and you know when i'm touching it otherwise it's like not fun for me so um and because this was already uh paste i mean i prepared it you know ahead of time so it's not going to take that long unfortunately i'm fasting so i will not be able to tell whether salt is enough or not but since i have been cooking for a long time i do have an idea mm. how much usually you need to use it or not So I'm gonna just add a little bit more. Okay, that's enough. Okay, so we're gonna start with the uh, piaju. We Bengali call it piaju, which is like a uh, pakora in in Hindi. I think it's called pakora. pakora. So all right. So this one is ready to go. So. Okay. And then tell us about the oil that you're frying. What kind of oil are you using and how long do you have to make it? Does it have to be really really hot? Uh yes, it has to be pretty hot because otherwise uh, uh right now I I have it in a very low heat but I'm going to increase it right now. So I would say medium heat. so that way it doesn't get burned but my my oil is not very hot right now so i just increased but once it's like hot i'm going to go go a little bit medium so that way it doesn't get burned because this has to cook for uh, at least 5 10 minutes too so what i do i put it with my hand okay i just grab a little like about this much and i pour it in straight to the oil So I can see my oil is not hot enough but it's okay because I already increased it. So I'll just keep going it. And you're making sort of So you just you just make it like a ball, like a small hamburger shape. Yeah, like a very very small uh hamburger or a little it doesn't have to be that perfect shape. Mhm. It I will So this will be pretty good. All right. And this dill uh, lentil pakora is actually super delicious. I do not know if you ever had it. Uh but the key thing is you have to add a lot of onion. Okay. Lots of onion. So onion, salt and so chili. Tell us tell us about the paste. How did you get that Oh so this is a um, have do you know uh, masoor dal yes so the yellow so the yellow dal yellow one yes so i uh, soaked for about 30 minutes and then i just hand blended 
Okay, so you put it on yeah. the blender and you got the paste from the dal, the lentils. So, yeah, just dal, nothing else. So was, I didn't add anything else. So, and I just hand blended and it literally took me like three to four minutes. And then... Um, and you added so a little bit of salt, that's it? No other masalas or, or flavors? Not with, not with this one. So this one... Uh, we don't want to lose the actual dal flavor, the lentil flavor. So that's why this one, it's only needed uh, cilantro, fresh cut cilantro, chili, onion, and some um, salt. Oh that's all. And, and, and for color, if you want to have a better color, some people do use some um, turmeric. Uh, I usually don't, uh, but turmeric just uh, makes the color a little bit prettier. That's it. So, and they're sizzling. I can see the sizzle in the in the pot. I can see the uh, me, sizzling. Okay, so yeah, if you can see, better. can you see? Let me now. I can see much better. So yeah. oh, perfect, perfect. So so now what I'm going to do? I'll just wait for maybe five ten minutes. Oh, hold on. Oh, sorry, is yeah, I knew that I'm going to have a hard time with my sari. Excuse me for a second. Yeah, now, as you're wrapping up your sari again and trying yeah. to become uh, uh, Jolly, uh, the kitchen chef, tell us about the beautiful sari you're wearing. Okay, so like I said, I usually... Uh, one second. <laughs> my sari, this is like, this is, I was so afraid of like, um, okay, so it's done. Sorry about that. <laughs> right. It's my first time wearing a sari. No, you look so not. So sari yeah. is a very no. uh, traditional Bangladeshi outfit, and we have shalwar kameez as well. But we Bangladeshi uh, prefer, like, I personally wear sari all the time. Sometimes I wear shalwar kameez, but uh, this is my favorite. I just love it. Uh, so I thought, since you know. Today I got the opportunity, and I know a lot of people did kind of like know how you know what is saris. So mm -hmm. I wore something simple because I knew I was going to be in the kitchen. I didn't want to, uh, you know, I, I mean the oil and this and that kind, you know, spray all over. So that's why I wore a simple one. Uh, but yeah, sari is something I love it, and this is very traditional Bangladeshi outfit. So and I wear it whenever I get the opportunity. No, you look lovely, and I, I told you before, I thought I, I admire uh, how you put it on so quickly and you're cooking with it. Uh, <laughs> I know that when I, uh, you know, when Pakistanis wear saris, we do it for weddings, and it's only that occasion we get ready, we go to the wedding, and we come And back then you take off, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, for us, actually, we, we, we wear it, like, no, I personally don't. I only wear it just like you explained, like when you go to the party, party or any other, you know, birthday party, anniversary party. If it's a Bangladeshi uh, party, then I always wear sari. But same thing, you know, I, I go to the party, I wear it, but I can I can keep it nicely, no problem. Uh, and I'm very comfortable with that. Uh, but sometimes, you know, I, I, I like to always pin it so that way it doesn't come off, come off. So today, actually, I did not. So that's why I was having a little... Time. And I never cook with sari, so that's <laughs> that's why. Oh, so that's this for everybody. Do not cook with a sari. I mean, unless you're very comfortable, because you know, people from Bangladesh, like for instance, my mom or grandma or all, they all, all their life they wear sari and they cook with that. They work with sari only. Like I've never seen my mom wear anything else other than sari, you know. So I guess we're not used to, that's why it's a little hassle, but normally uh, for traditional Bangladeshi people, it's pretty common, it's normal. And you said you were born in a town near Dhaka, now is that right? Uh, it is, uh, uh, the, the city is called uh, Magura, but I believe the district is uh, Joshor. Uh, so I was born there and then I moved to Sweden and I did my middle school and high school there. And for my undergrad, I did uh, here in California. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and right now you are in Southern California. I am, yes. Yes, I'm in LA. So it's nice. It's pretty warm actually here. It's pretty hot. 
Jolly, what's the name of your um, cooking channel so that we can share it? Jolly's Kitchen. Jolly's Kitchen. Jolly's Kitchen. Jolly, J-O-L-I-E, Jolly's Kitchen slash uh, healthy lifestyle. I like that. <laughs> so I I, while, um, while my pakora is uh, cooking, I'm actually going to uh, make... Uh, I think I'm going to start making noodles. So here I have seven eggs. So I'm going to um, mix this with a little bit of uh, salt, onion, and chili. I'm going to literally scramble it. Mm -hmm. And then I will add all my vegetables with that. Then I will pour my noodles. So this is like a, if you have everything chopped and cut, and if noodles is already boiled, it's literally five to 10 minutes prep. Very, very, very simple, uh, but it has egg. I will add broccoli, cabbage, carrots, and noodles. So it's, a, it's again, uh, it is healthy. You're getting a lot of nutrition, not just you're having pasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I added, I purposely added a lot of uh, noodle, I mean, egg, because, you know, we need Ramadan, we're fasting, and we need, when we break it, we need something mm -hmm. good. So I, for noodles, I'm gonna use olive oil because um, when I make, when I fry, I use canola oil or vegetable oil, but anything that I cook for my family, I usually use uh, uh, olive oil. So for noodles, I'm gonna start with olive oil and then. Okay. Do you wanna turn the, can you turn the camera a little bit to your other dish? Yes, I am. Thanks. Yeah. Now we see. All right. So, so my pan, I'm going to just add a little bit of chili and salt. So this, I mixed it with a little bit of onion, chili, salt, mix it. And now I'm going to just scramble it. So you had a bit, of, little bit of olive oil and then olive oil, just a little bit. I mean, it's just like you know how you scramble your egg. Yeah. So just the way you scramble your egg, I'm just gonna scramble it together, and you don't need to do a lot of oil. But I'm gonna add a little bit more when I pour all my vegetables. Is it? Yeah. So we can see it. Well. Yeah. We Perfect. And my pakora is getting golden color. So that means it's soon, I'm gonna flip it and cook the other side and then it will be done. And the pakoras, is it important to have lots of oil at the beginning? Because yeah, it has to be deep fried, unfortunately. Right. That is the, that is the sad part that, you know, it has to be deep fried. Uh, but what I do, I usually, once it's deep fried, I put it on the pepper towel and I try to make sure all the oil is uh, absorbed. So, yeah. So, so my eggs are pretty much scrambled, as you can see. Okay. But I'd like to make it a little bit golden color because uh, I'm going to add it with noodles. I don't want the egg to smell raw. So I'm going to make it a little bit colorful until it gets golden. And uh, wow. meanwhile, my pakora, I think it's ready to... Lip. Oh wow, the, the color that's coming out of your yes, let me show a little bit from golden the closer. brown. Yeah, so it's coming out golden brown. So other side is actually prettier. So you can see this is the color we're gonna have at the end. So I'm gonna flip it all. And Jolly, is the, yes. um, are you going to reduce the flame on, on that or are you just going to keep it at medium? I see that it's a, like a medium, right? Right now, I, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I just reduced a little bit because I want my dal to cook completely. So, oh, yeah, it's dal, it's lentils. It's a lentil, yeah. I, but the musur dal usually doesn't take that long to cook. So, okay. So this is going to take another maybe five minutes until the both side is done. And my egg is looking golden color now. 
I like to make it like, I like to break my scrambled eggs so that way it's not a big chunk. So I'm gonna just break it a little bit and then, all right. Now I'm gonna add my broccoli. Mm -hmm. So I'll do a little bit of carrots to get the beautiful color. And I'll do the broccoli as well. I'll do the cabbage a little bit later because uh, cabbage doesn't take that long to cook. So I'll wait that for a little bit. Just for five more minutes. I'll add some more olive oil here. So it's not too dry. Yeah. Now I'm gonna add some chili, the green chili here. Cause like I said, I love spicy noodles. So I'm gonna do some green chili and some onion. Green chili. Okay. And I'll do some onions. So you added some green chilies. You added some I, so, so I had broccoli and broccoli and two carrots. I have carrots, broccoli, onion, chili, and now I'm gonna add some salt. And and just a the, dash of salt. Sorry? And you added just a little dash of salt. Just a little, like a, a half spoon. Half, yeah. yeah, and look at the beautiful color. Yeah, it looks really I mean, good. it's yellow, it's red, it's green. And uh, I'm gonna now add some cabbage. So that way you have full of vegetable. And when you're eating it, you don't feel like you're just eating noodles by itself. So you have like a lot of vegetable. And I, like I said, I added, I also had seven eggs there. So it's very it's healthy. Full, full meal, actually. That is true. It has all the protein that you need. And then yes. And um, sometimes I use um, some chicken or I can also do shrimp as well. Mm -hmm. So today I just did the egg. Um, but you can do chicken or, uh, or what do you call, or ground turkey, ground beef. You know, anything you want, shrimp. So the noodles actually doesn't take that long. So that is that. And I have, and my noodles is already boiled I'm going to just pour it there I use the spaghetti noodles mm -hmm. so you can use any one <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me so I already boiled this one so I'm going to just pour it That's a really wholesome meal, especially for our young people. Like my kids would love that. To so, have, you know, the noodles. This one I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna use both my. Yeah, I think uh, the noodles. This one actually, my kids loves it too because um, I mean, every kid still love noodles, right? Every but. Uh, Usually uh, kids prefer no vegetable, but I always try to convince my kids to eat vegetables. So, so all those parents that want to convince their kids that um, vegetables can be tasty. Uh, yeah. I, I think this is a great idea. You know, now that you're making this, it's reminding me of my mother and uh -huh. Her dilemma was the same thing. Like, how do I get my, my kids, my, my daughters to eat vegetables? Vegetables. I don't know if you remember the word macaroni. Oh, yeah. Know? My daughter loves it. 
my mother used to make macaroni and then she would like try to put as many vegetables so that because of macaroni her kids would eat uh you know uh oh wow so you're yeah you know, this is reminding taking me back to my childhood in pakistan yes actually i just uh, on the first ro- ram rosa my daughter was fasting so she asked for that so i had to make uh, macaroni for her so she she loves it that's her favorite so this one is pretty much done um i don't like to overcook my vegetable so because uh broccoli and cabbage if you overcook it becomes soggy so i like to have like crunchy uh bite so i'm not going to cook too much this is pretty much done it's ready and we have the pretty color and this one is done so i'm going to just pour it back to my serving dish one is done um, i would like to show you from the closer look oh wow so, so look, good and it is uh, not oily at all i uh, i used olive oil and it has uh, the pretty color um, broccoli cabbage and my broccoli is not overly cooked cabbage is not overcooked either carrots are also uh, medium cooked and uh, full of egg so this is a very delicious uh, you know meal for iftar or even full meal actually so not necessarily just for iftar so so no so this is done i'm this going to start easy. my yeah. chola now <laughs> and for those of us that are fasting hang in there um uh, we have <laughs> hours to go <laughs> excuse me but that's the thing a lot of people ask like when you're in the kitchen you know and you're fasting what happens and don't you think uh, jolly that we as like we get trained and we get used to cooking and fasting at the same time and oh yeah absolutely absolutely and eating, right uh, and i don't even feel like it's torturing you know some people are like oh my gosh it's torturing to cook yeah. and fasting yeah. it yeah. doesn't bother me at all i i i look forward to uh have iftar but during the ramadan i mean during the daytime i cook uh, it doesn't bother me only thing sometimes you know uh when i cook uh, I, if my kids are not close to me i can't tell them can you see if i need enough salt or not uh but uh now my kids also they fast so it's really difficult like you know if everybody's fasting so there's no one to taste like you know if i need enough salt or not but uh when you're cooking for a long time you get used to it you have an idea you yeah. know how much salt you usually need to put it so so this one almost done look at this pretty color oh, wow beautiful sizzling golden brown and i yes you know, i have to try these pakoras because in in pakistan most mm-hmm. of the time our pakoras are a uh, gram flour so i have never really had the ones with lentil Some, so a- you tell you 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 can tell the difference it's like a day and night really? so this is a very very traditional bangladeshi household i mean every household you go this is the, this is like one of the items they have to have it yeah and uh, we don't mix this with any other flour just just lint you know masoor dal lots of onion chili cilantro and salt of course um i didn't add any um uh, what do you call turmeric but i still got the pretty color so but some people they add some turmeric just for even more yellow color i like the natural color so i kept it without turmeric so no well, i think they look really tasty and the, you know everybody loves lentils i think lentils yes. are very healthy so to, to it's protein you know i mean lentil is also a protein so and again and- another great vegetarian dish that uh, all of my friends who are vegetarians you can make this and also enjoy it as i will i'm sure absolutely absolutely so this is um the next one that i'm going to do i'm going to add some um what do you call the little bit of vegetable oil and i'm going to start making uh chola i think uh indian um uh, you guys probably call chana we also call it uh, in punjab they call it chana in in sindh and karachi they call it chola <coughs> yeah it's the same thing 
right 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 so i'm going to start with my chana so first i'm going to saute my onion then Once my onion is a little bit sauteed, I'm going to add a uh, little bit of ginger and uh, garlic paste. I don't like to use a lot of spices because I feel like if you use a lot of spices, your actual food taste uh, goes away. So I try to have the actual taste of the food. So for example, uh, this uh, pakora. So if I eat, if I added like, you know, cumin, coriander, uh, all the masala, then I would only taste the masala, not the actual dal. But you need uh, onion and you need salt and uh, cilantro is always, you know, delicious. So, so you don't lose that actual flavor, you know. So same thing with uh, chola. Uh, a lot of people use a lot of masala. I try to keep it less masala but I'm going to use some uh, ingredients so this particular masala I'm going to use two bay leaves, bay leaves just yeah. for the flavor I am doing um, two roasted uh, chili okay this is by the way it's from my uh, my own garden so when the chilies are all ripe and red I don't know uh, sometimes I have too much so what I do I, I add dry Exactly. And then I roast with a little bit of oil and I save it in the jar. So you have it all year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, I think, you know what bhorta is? Um, no, tell me. Like, about you know, so it's like a, any bhorta means uh, anything we do mashed, like a mashed potato. We call it bhorta. So the when bhorta. I make that kind of bhortas, yeah, yeah. Bangladeshi people eat a lot of bhortas. Okay. And for that, these kind of chilies are delicious. So I'm going to use two of those. And then I'm also going to do some um, cinnamon stick for the flavor. So just a few cinnamon stick and a couple of cardamoms. Okay. That's it. So this is for the flavor. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have one teaspoon of, I have a ginger and garlic paste here so i'm just gonna i put it all together so i just pasted ginger and garlic together so i'll just do one teaspoon one teaspoon of ginger and garlic and you yeah one teaspoon of ginger and garlic paste put it together and once i'm gonna just wait a couple of minutes uh in the meantime my pakoras are ready so I'm gonna remove this one. Look how pretty it is. I just have to show you. Oh my yeah. God. That looks beautiful. Oh, now that's a piece of art. That's beautiful. Thank you. Your pakoras are beautiful. And um, Jolly, you've inspired me to try the lentil pakoras. I'm going to do that. This is, this is I would recommend every non-Bangladeshi people to try it. Yeah. I wish I could turn on my, my exhausted because uh, normally I don't cook without my exhausted on. But then I'm going to have a problem with hearing. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, and Zara, can you open the uh, door, please? Can you open the door? Yes, I know that we have, um, when we're cooking, we need to have all the vents open. Yeah, I usually open my uh, door plus I turn on my ventilation on, but it's too noisy. So I'm gonna oh. just deal with it. So I'm gonna add some chopped uh, onion for my chola. Just a little bit, not too much. Okay, so we have onions, we have tomatoes now, and we have uh, the kara masalas, as we call them, fresh uh, yes. spices. Yeah. Some spices like a cardamom, cinnamon, bay leaf, and uh, I'm going to now add a little bit of chili powder, turmeric. So I'll start with some turmeric. And I'm doing everything like a half teaspoon, so I have a tiny little spoon. So one teaspoon of chili powder, and I'll do some salt as well. 
ya. All right. I'm going to add um, just a little bit of oil because it needs to go a little more oil. There you go. So while this is cooking, I'm going to remove my bakura right here. It's pretty heavy. Let me bring the camera. It looks very my um crispy. Yeah, it is totally crispy. And so every bite is going to be crispy. And let me see. This is almost done. Usually, um, we do this fried stuff like in an hour before it's thought time, so it, it's still warm and nice and crispy. Uh, so this is my first uh, pakora, uh, lentil pakora, which is done. And now I'm gonna start with my eggplant. So in the same pot, I'm gonna do the eggplant now. And uh, here I have mixed of uh, uh, chick flesh. Uh, I think I talked uh, in the beginning the rice flour mm -hmm. and the yes, yeah, and the chickpeas flour. So it's all mixed with a little bit of uh, salt, pepper, chili. I did add it some cumin and coriander here, so it gives you nice flavor. Because uh, I'm gonna do the eggplant now. So I dip the eggplant with this batter. And you just have to hold it. Make sure it's coated with this, and then you put it on the pan. So that's my eggplant. And uh, is it? Can you see? Yes, we can. Um, okay. Jolie, can you hold uh, the the? Hold it up so we can see the consistency of the batter. So, yeah, so it has to be like like that. Okay, like that. Much better now. So yeah. so it has to your your plant has to be covered with that. So if, if it's too thin, then it, your plant is not going to have the coat. So it has to be coated with that. So it cannot be very thin, or it cannot be very thick either. So this is like the perfect. Yeah. Like that's good. Yeah. And then just for the sake of time, if you can show us the um, cauliflower and a bit of all the vegetables. Uh, sorry, say it again. So just for the sake of time, if you can show us how um, the cauliflower. Yes, is. definitely. Actually, you know what? With the, I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah. Uh, that in the same pan, I'm going to just pull the cauliflower now. And it's the same. Just dip it up. Dip it up and put it, and cauliflower is going to take a little bit extra time than uh, eggplant. So you just dip it right there, a bunch of cauliflower. And uh, my eggplant is going to be done before cauliflower, which is fine. In the meantime, I'm going to start with my veggie pakora. While this is on the process, I'm going to start uh, mixing my veggie pakora because that I haven't started yet. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna bring the camera a little bit closer so you can have a look. Okay, so they're in the batter, in the oil, cooking and sizzling. So, now my chola is ready to go here. So this one, I'm ready to pour my chola. Oh, that's great. That's where yeah. it is. Yeah. 
And I'm also gonna add my chopped potatoes that is going to go with that chola. Um, a lot of people, they do add potatoes. A lot of people, they don't. Um, I do sometimes, like the last two days, uh, I didn't have potatoes added. I just made it plain. But today I thought I could add some potatoes just for people to know that you can actually add vegetable if you want, like, I mean, potato especially. So uh, I hope you can see this one. Yes, I can see it. A question I have is, did you boil the potatoes before? Yeah, you... yes. So yes. in the beginning, I was mentioning that uh, yeah, for the you. safe, you know, because we have not much enough time. So I decided to boil my potato and I chop it in a smaller pieces. And then I also boil my chola. So okay. that way, because the chola, it takes some time. So I made, I boiled it actually this morning. So everything is chopped and cut this morning. So, so now that this was already boiled, uh, it's not gonna take that long time to cook. So as soon as I'm done with my chola, I do wanna cook my fish curry. That is uh, very interesting. And I think a lot of people uh, will like it because fish is also another uh, great recipe and it's very healthy. And uh, fish is very traditional Bangladeshi dish as well. Um, so this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait probably another 10 minutes for chola. And then in the meantime, we will check the pakora. I'll look short on the close up a little bit. What looks wonderful. I'm going to flip it. Excellent usually doesn't take that long, so it will be done pretty fast. And you're just going to turn them? Over. I'm just turning them. Yes, I'm just turning them, and uh, yeah. And the pakura, by the way, uh, it is so delicious. And pakura doesn't soak too much oil, so you can actually consider that's pretty healthy because uh, the oil doesn't go inside. So it's whatever true. it's on the surface, and then uh, if you have enough spices uh, uh, with with this uh, mixing, it tastes unbelievable. Uh, you know what is chaat masala? Yes, yes, I so do. So if you, yeah, so if you do, uh, if you add a little bit of chaat masala with this, it's actually gonna taste uh, delicious. And which I actually did, uh, I also added a little bit of chaat masala, so that will, it actually it adds some flavors, yeah. It, it does, it definitely does. All right, so. so if you don't know what chaat masala is, um, we will be posting a picture of it. You can get it at any uh, Indian South Asian store. It's also available at Mediterranean stores. And it's boxed and it says chaat masala. It truly yeah, is flavor to everything that you're having, especially vegetarian dishes. Yes, I was I was going to see if I could show right now. Uh, I guess I could look through my cabinet. Otherwise, you know, uh, I could just hold the box and people can just see, you know, what's up and so like. I, I do have it for sure. I just don't know exactly where I kept it. Um, so this is, well, when my chola is almost uh, done, I'm going to spray some fresh cilantro, like a fresh chopped cilantro. So it will give some nice green color on the on the top. So that will be mostly for the decoration purpose. So all right. So I'm gonna start mixing my while that is on the let me see if I turn on this a little bit more. And now I want to mix this with you so that way you know how I make thing, how I'm gonna make the, the no the fish I'm gonna wait. But while my pakora is gone, uh, I mean, while my pakora is cooking, I'm gonna do the uh, veggie pakora now, which I have in here at the spinach. Mm -hmm. So I'll add some spinach here. And I'll do some shredded uh, potatoes. I'll just I'll do a little bit, my, I'll not do the whole thing. Um, chopped onion, cabbage, I will do some uh, chili powder, just a little bit of chili powder, a little bit of turmeric, um, chili, 
the green chili. Green chili that you had, yeah. And uh, cilantro. And then I will have this two tea, uh, teaspoon or tablespoon of uh, rice flour. So the rice flour, I don't put a lot, but that is just for the crispiness. So mostly I'm gonna use the chickpeas flour. We, I think in India, they call it besan. Besan, besan, yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna use that. So I'm not going to use any water. So as I keep mixing it, the veg from the vegetable, it's going to get a uh, little bit so from the water, the yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you don't really need to add any water. Unless it's very, very dry, you could add it a tiny little bit, but let's see if we need it or not. Probably not. You know what they say about great chefs use their hands? I, I love using my hand. I mean, honestly, if I, if I could, I could use other, uh, you know, stuff, but it, I think it's fun to use my hand. Yeah, and plus, it I tastes think... better, I think. Yeah, and plus you know that's your food that will be going into your bodies, and that's how it feels. It's important to feel your food. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel. I think so. I think so. So, um, what am I missing? In South Asian cooking um, kitchens, you will find uh, South Asian cooks using a lot of their hands to mix things up. Um, yes. It's, you know, it's like we call it. Just a guesstimate, but that's how they use the chutka of this, chutka of that, right? Yes. They also use their hands to ensure everything is mixed up. And so right, right, right. Chefs will say, you so know, as, as, it, so I don't know. As I'm mixing it, you can see it's uh, the vegetable is getting um, a little bit soft. And oh, I forgot my carrots. That's why I was thinking one more vegetable mixing soft. My carrots. I also forgot my carrots. Oh yeah, that gives it a dash of color. Yes. So look at the lovely color. You have green, yellow, red. It's just awesome. And this one is going to be very similar to the uh, lentil takura. So I'm going to just make a ball and then deep fry. I didn't know you could do that without adding any liquid. So this is uh, something new I've learned today. Uh, you don't necessarily have to, but especially if I'm making it right now, instant, if I, if I mix it and keep it for like 30 minutes, the, the natural of water from the uh, vegetable, it comes mm -hmm. and then it makes it even soft. But wow. since I'm going to make it instant, it's, I have to just keep mixing it until it, it holds together. Exactly. And as you can see, look at it. It's already uh, forming mm -hmm. like a ball. Look, but there is no liquid. I didn't put any water here. See, I can actually make a ball without putting any sort of, so this is ready to fry. Oh. But I'm gonna just do a couple of more minutes so that way it makes it nice and firm. And I just love the color and it's you know, spinach is so delicious. I'm gonna add some more spinach. I love spinach pakora. A lot of people make just spinach pakora. I don't know if you've had it, but it's so good. In Pakistan, we make, um, uh, you know, eggplant and spinach pakoras, but we are not, yeah. we're not so creative when it comes to adding to the other vegetables. We need to be creative. Right, right. Okay, so this is actually ready. It uh, didn't take that long as you could see and it's all ready for fried now. So I'm going to move in to my other part of the cooking. I think my eggplant is ready. Yeah, my eggplant is almost ready. The brown golden color. Yeah, it's just a pretty color. It's so delicious. It tells you it's ready. Yeah. And uh, cauliflower doesn't take that long either. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's also dependent on how you like it. If you like your vegetables to be crisp, then you're not going to fry them that way. Yeah, I don't personally like when it's too mushy. I like it when it's a little crunchy. So I love that way. And also now that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, since we started our, it's our way early. So yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to put it in the oven. So when I put it in the oven, so that will cook also for a little bit. So I'm not worried about. So that's um, what it is. And you, you can fry the, if yeah and then just keep it in the oven on low or do you keep it and i keep it in very low uh so that way uh, you're not burning your food and also sometimes you know the last minute fried stuff it's too much your house gets so warm and you know it's not pleasant so i try to make it like you know a couple of hours before uh, if far and then i put it in the oven like Usually do like 175 the temperature and then it gets warm like the entire couple of hours and it doesn't, you know, food doesn't even get burned. So okay, that's that's another tip. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so so oven, keep it in the oven. Warm it up. So anybody up. anybody wants to make this bar ahead of time, you just uh, put it in a nice little well, big tray. And uh, for me, I keep everything in one tray. So one side I use my uh, eggplant, then my uh, lentil, then cauliflower, and veggie pakora. I just put it in four or five corner, and then and the whole tray goes into the oven. And then when you're serving, you just put it separate, or or if it's just your family, just have it from the tray. You know, you yeah. don't have to. You don't have to. Yeah, because then you have to do a lot of dishes as well. So if you if you know what you're doing, so no, that's it's hard work, but then it. It's totally worth it when you try the crunchy flavors that come out of. Uh, Absolutely. Um, and also, you know, uh, you probably know the our culture, our background, like uh, my mom or our grand, I know, parents, we, are, we, we grew up with servants, like we have like three, four, five uh, helper in the house. So uh, here we have to do everything on our own. So, you know, chopping, cutting, dishing, everything is on our own. So over there back home, uh, they have a good life because you know they have like yeah, a couple of yeah so that's why I have to I mean we have to do whatever is convenient for us right that's true yeah absolutely all right so my eggplants are looking beautiful and it's at it look at the color and it's actually done so I'm going to drain all the oil and then I'm going to transfer to my serving dish and then I'm gonna start my veggie pakoda. Okay, um, I think we're gonna have time for the veggie pakoda and we're gonna to have to come back to you for the fish dish. Okay. Uh, my veggie pakoda, actually the fish dish is going to be on this part and this is all done. So we can start the fish over there. All right. Yeah, this is actually done. I'm so, going to okay, so the cholas or the chanas, whatever you want to call it, um, yes, they are done, and they're done with that. on the stove for about 15-20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So this is done. I am going to transfer this to a serving dish, so that way. All right. So. See how it looks. So. So here is my chola yeah. that looks perfectly good. done. That's beautiful. And uh, now, oh, now I'm getting a little hungry watching all the <laughs> I know, I know, me too. So now I'm gonna we're gonna start with the uh, fish. Okay. And this uh, while I'm doing the fish, so can you give me one onion? Please, give me one onion. Yeah. Oh, so all of our viewers that are watching this, I want to tell you that in Ramadan, Muslims actually, they have fun making foods that for the rest of the year, they may not make. Um, so this is only once a, once a year. So yes. Fried stuff, we uh, as Muslims, we will probably make it more of in Ramadan. And then for the rest of the year, we'll try to be health conscious and not fried. We just have the regular, uh, you know, chicken, beef, yeah. fish, vegetable. Yeah. Uh, but um, this is a very special food because 
you know, I mean, a lot of people who are watching might think that, oh my God, this food that lady is cooking is so unhealthy, it's all day fried. But keep that in your mind. This is only once a year. Yeah. Uh, we definitely do not do every year. And uh, so I'm actually putting my veggie pakoras. So simply making a uh, ball, but very lightly I'm tapping it. I don't want to make it too tight because then it's not going to cook inside. So slightly uh, tapping it so that way it folds together. And uh, so once this is done, and then my fish, that's it. And the fish is already, did I show you the fish that I prepared already? No, you do you want to show us that? We have about- Yes, I would like to show that. To finish up. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. Done. And then I was thinking, um, Jolly, if you could take pictures of it, we'd love to post it on our Facebook page. I will. Yeah, definitely. All the dishes when they, you know, when they're ready, we want to- start. Absolutely, absolutely. Those. So this is almost done. My uh, cauliflower is also done. So, you know, I mean, if you have everything ready within an hour, you can easily do four or five dishes, no problem. Yeah, I think you start getting used to it as Ramadan progresses, you know exactly what time. Yeah, we know exactly what you need and what are the ingredients. And uh, so here, uh, to save my time, I have two fish here. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I pan fried my fish. So this is not completely raw. Mm -hmm. So I uh, marinated my fish with a little bit of salt, paper, and uh, uh, salt, chili, and turmeric. That's it. And then I pan fried. Mm -hmm. So now when I cook, it's going to save half of my time. So, and uh, this is the fish I just, it's, it's, I cut it in a separate pieces, but I just put it together so it looks like fish. <laughs> So that's, so that's what kind of fish did you pick? This is a pomfret. Pomfret, which is the famous South Asian Bangladesh yes. pomfret. Yes, yes. I got it from Asian market and it's actually fresh. It's not frozen. So when I bought it, it was completely fresh. So I'm going to start my fish now while my pakuras are going. Um, okay, so I just need to chop, my, chop some onion while I'm... that I was going to be over with my onion. So I'm going to just quickly chop my onion. So that way you can see my chopping skill as well. Let's see how you chop the onion. I know. I usually, when I'm not in a hurry, I do a very nice job with the chopping. But right now, um, for the sake of time, you're doing it in a, a you know, split. Yes, yeah, but I, I chop very fast. So it's not a problem. I was in uh, Hawaii with my daughter and um, I had forgotten. Um, I'm not a big, big uh, fan of cooking. I'm a fan of eating. Um, I, my husband cooks in my house. Oh, my how lucky. That's awesome. <laughs> my husband doesn't come to the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, my husband he doesn't do many things in the house, but he will cook. And, oh. and so, you know, I always had him chop the onions, but I was at my daughter's and she said, mom, can you make kima? So I made uh -huh. I, I chopped the onions and I forgot how stingy onions can be. But as you so see, did you see how quickly I chopped my onion? Yeah, you're way faster than I was. <laughs> uh, and I don't see any tears coming out of your eyes. No, no, I, so what, what you have to do, that's actually one of the tip. Uh, I think a lot of people knows, but just in case, so when I cut the chanyan in the half, you have to rinse it first. Otherwise that, uh, otherwise you do end up crying, you know? So I do not know if you notice, like I cut it in a half and then I quickly rinse it. Oh. And then I just chop it. But I also try not to look because I chop very fast. I just look other way around and I just do it. And I, I actually study hotel restaurant management in Sweden. So our, our teacher taught us how to hold a knife and how to put your finger so you don't chop. So basically the key thing is like, you are able to chop anything without looking. Oh, but you, wow. the, the key word is like, uh, you have to, um, I do want to show you this one actually. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I just remember my teacher now. <laughs> So I'm going to show you how to chop onion without even looking. And every piece is going to look the same. It's not going to look, you know, one piece bigger than the other one. So my onion is ready. So I put my finger right here and I go 
one. And then I'm looking at you and I'm chopping it. Oh my gosh, yes, I yeah. did. I'm actually looking at you and chopping it and and every single piece is perfect. Look, oh, yeah. like very fine. <laughs> chopped, I, 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 like, I like it. I'm gonna try your tips when it comes to eating the onions. And then uh, a lot of other things that you showed me, the, the fish, you can pan fry it and then cook it. Uh, yeah, so uh, sometimes uh, you don't have to pan fry if you don't want to, but um, oh. normally we do uh, lightly, like very lightly, like a minute or two only. So the fish curry is the most popular dish in Bangladesh. So for that, I have the onion here. It's looking almost like a little bit of golden color. Now I'm gonna do, uh, add some ginger garlic paste, which I already have it here. So it's very important that you do a lot of ginger and onion mm -hmm. and garlic. So I put the ginger, garlic, onion. Then I'm going to add all the other spices like, uh, chili powder. First, I'm going to start with some turmeric, mm -hmm. one half teaspoon, of, I mean, half teaspoon of turmeric, then one teaspoon of chili powder because I like spicy. And I have the coriander powder here, but everything is fresh grind. This is not the, you know, uh, pre-made one that you buy from the store because uh, this one is at home. I roasted at home first wow. and then I hand grind it. So this gives you the smell, like the fresh flavor. Because the one that you will buy from the store, when you open the jar, you don't smell anything. Right. But this one, um, you know those uh, old traditional one, the hand grinder? Yeah. So I roasted it and then I hand grind it. So this is my cumin. Oh, that's beautiful. I can already see the difference between uh, the one that the cumin that you have and the one that I buy packaged in a box. Yeah. So the one that you buy, the color is lighter. Yeah. And this is a darker color because I roasted at home and then I hand, uh, you know, I did it with my hands. So it and smells delicious as well. Um, I gonna do a little bit of two bay leaves. I on my fish and. I'm also going to add, so all the tomatoes that I have, the leftover tomatoes, yeah. I'm going to put it back to my fish curry. So this is gonna make the gravy thicker. My cauliflower looking very nice, as you can see. Oh, they also brown up really well. It is beautifully done. Yeah. Uh, this is done. These are the and supporters. So as you, as you can see, so these are the, uh, see how crunchy it is? Oh, nice. So it, and it's just dull. It's not soft. It's very crunchy. This yeah. is my eggplant. Yeah. And this is the cauliflower. So I'm going to take a picture and send it to you later once everything is done. And uh, the chola is right here. So we're actually done one, two, three, four dishes already. Yeah. And my veggie pakora is looking pretty nice as well. I'm going to flip it. And the veggie pakoras are amazing. I mean, I, I recommend everyone, whether you're a vegetarian or non-vegetarian, this is like very delicious and you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, definitely. They look really attractive and uh, very. And I, I just love the combination of the color. You know, you're right. They look very attractive. They, it's, they turn out golden brown, but before they go in, they yeah, right. Beautiful mixture of of green. Yes. And you saw, I did not eat any. I, I mean, I did not add any water. Yeah, and that is amazing to me as well. So I'm gonna try that. Just. Uh, just make sure that every vegetable is chopped very nice, finely, like very thin slices. And you just have to keep mixing it until it becomes soft. All right, so this is, I'm gonna add a little bit of water here so that way 
uh, it, you know, cooks better. Yeah. Okay. My husband doesn't eat fish, so uh, I only eat fish, but I love fish. All right. So yeah, so the only thing is now you're gonna cook the the ingredients for 10, five, 10 minutes or just a couple of minutes. So the, the pakora is probably another five minutes and then it's ready because I already flipped. Mm -hmm. And the fish about, I would say about 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Yeah, I would say about 10 minutes. And then what do you do with the fish? You add the fish to the curry. So I tell you just in case we're, we're running out of time. So once my gravy is looking nice and thick, I'm going to add my fish in there. And I can probably add a little bit of water just to have some gravy. Okay. Uh, but I might have enough gravy here. So I, I don't think I'm going to add right now because I just added water, as you can see. So as soon as my tomatoes are completely mashed, mm -hmm. I'm, going to, I'm going to add my fish here. Isn't it so, that when you have a curry and you have a fish curry, you have it with rice, so it's you fish. Fast. You cannot have it with roti or bread. Yeah, fish, you have, you have to, to have it with rice. rice. Yeah, yeah, because fish curry. I mean, like you know, chicken curry or beef curry. Usually, uh, you have it with bread or naan, but uh, fish is something. Uh, it is. It goes only with rice, in my opinion. Yeah, no, you're right, because I know that that's why um, my husband's father's family is from Calcutta. So they also oh, really? They eat a lot of fish. Yeah, they eat a lot of fish. And I, yeah. I had never had better fish uh, than, I, than at their home. They know Absolutely. Fish. And so I, um, my, my family, my father's family is from Lucknow. My mother's um, from Punjab, but they both grew up in Hyderabad, India. So they... I, I was exposed to Lucknow cooking, to Bangladesh, uh, to, um, uh, you know, Lucknow, Punjabi, and right. Kolkata. And so I, I love all the flavors. And I think it's so unique and it's so different. Um, yet, you know, one would think, oh, they're all from India, but they're not. They're all. They're not. They're not. Even, you know, um, I have a friend from Calcutta. So when she cooks her fish and when I cook our, my fish, even though it's the same fish, but our way of cooking, it's a bit different. Yeah, I agree. I think everyone yeah. has a unique flavor, unique style. Yeah. And, um, you know, you, uh, you develop that as you become more and more of an uh, expert in cooking. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, after this, uh, I actually plan to make some halim uh, for iftar. But, you know, halim preparation takes longer. And halim, I thought that traditionally, I don't think halim is uh, from Bangladesh. I think halim is very uh, Pakistani, uh, or I would say India. But we Bangladeshi people love halim. We make a lot of halim as well. But I, I wasn't sure whether halim could be very traditional Bangladesh. But yes, I grew up with eating halim. All my life, I had halim. So... So we have middle. I, I love halim. So halim is one of my items for the for tonight iftar as well. But uh, because it takes longer time, so that will be after. Yes, I know. I understand. So um, I'm going to ask uh, you to send us the picture of the fish as you put it into the pot, and then what it looks like at the end. Um, my gravy is almost ready, so I'm actually going to put my fish and I'm going to cook my fish with this for another 5-10 minutes and that way it's going to be done. So you can just see how it looks. So let me see. Oh yeah. So it's all going to cook together and it will be a um, fish curry. Yeah, then I it's going to be fish curry. So I'm going to cook it for like maybe 5-10 minutes and then I'm going to add a little bit of water and then my fish will be like, I mean, once I add some water, I have to cook another five, 10 minutes and then it will be done. But basically I, this is the fish curry and I'm going to 
send you the final looks of uh, my fish curry. So for fish, sure. Fish curry and your final pakora platter. Um, with yes. Some of the pictures that you have and the cholas. And then um, if we have questions, we're going to ask you. But we'd love to have you again. Um, Absolutely. So thank you for being such a trooper and spending so many hours with us in the kitchen. But thank I'm you so that, much. Uh, I know that we'll be back and we hope to have you at every iftar um, and for you to share lovely dishes from your Bangladeshi jo Jolly's kitchen. Thank you. Thank so you much. so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank it was you. my and pleasure. Happy and happy Ramadan. Yes, you too. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, inshallah, we'll see you soon.